All right. So I've had both listeners to the podcast reach out and say they would like to hear another podcast. So the time is now. The podcast today is about creating a global movement. How can you create a global movement of self-improvement, of betterment? What is the evolution beyond CrossFit? I think CrossFit has done such amazing things for the world and it's awesome to see the lobby of CrossFit growing in power, stepping away from Facebook, standing up to Gatorade, you know, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, going after you know, those drinks being available inside the hospital system, children's hospitals and stuff. Like, it's so obvious that it's ridiculous for that to be the case, but who's really taking action against that? Like, what kind of a medical system, government system allows things that are obviously at the heart of the, the disease, you know, the, the health crisis and so many children, you know, they didn't used to really be children's hospitals. There wasn't such a need for them. And cancer and diabetes and especially type 2 were, were diseases that came on later in life. Now, children have been massively attacked by the medical system and it's good to see some pushback, you know, from at least from Greg Glassman. I don't know there are some CrossFit boxes that really buy into that higher philosophy of, of Greg Glassman. I love that it's a health movement and it's a powerful health movement. The question is like, what's after that? So what, what's the next step? What's the step beyond that? I believe that the step beyond that, because it's the yeah, Glassman's thing is like the third factor I'm talking about. There's nothing beyond conditioning and carbohydrate control, uh, or, you know, CrossFit and carbohydrate control, like get the movement part, right? Control carbohydrates. And you're there. That's my understanding of his, his two factors. And the third factor is kind of making fun of anything that anyone puts in between. And he makes fun of rock tape and he makes fun of ice baths and, you know, all these other things that I guess are supplementary factors. And I, I like looking at supplementary factors that can make that 1% difference. And he's right. Like they're not making a 50% difference in performance. They're not the things that are going to make a difference whether obesity crisis ends or it doesn't end. Like, CrossFit solution, health solution is if you can control blood sugar, control insulin and get strong, build fitness, then you don't have to worry about the health crisis. And I think for a large part, like that's it's hard to argue with. It is hard to argue with. And I think you know, pushing back against purely macro-based diets and, you know, the food industry, macro-based diets are really like if those fitness professionals that are just pushing macros, macros, macros and, you know, Pop-Tarts can fit inside your diet or whatever, you know, like that's the stereotype of it, but anything can fit inside your diet as long as it fits your macros. That philosophy, the food industry loves that. The processed food industry loves that. And we know that people overconsume when they eat highly palatable foods, processed foods, right? So as much as they, a lot of people are, are not trying to accelerate the health crisis with their, their fitness messaging, they are accelerating the health crisis by pushing that purely calorie a calorie is a calorie. It's only about macros. Like it's wrong. It's definitely wrong, and it's deadly. the The concept of eat less, move more doesn't work. It's deadly. When doctors told us not to smoke, that happened. There's a big decrease in smoking rates in Australia, and and the related deaths. People say when they say eat less, move more, eat calorie restricted foods, eat fat restricted foods, it accelerates the health crisis. Okay, if we look at all these preventable diseases, the you know brain diseases, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and all these things, they're accelerated by this focus on you just try and control your calories. Cardiovascular disease, you know, these, these conditions, diabetes, these conditions are made worse by this approach. You have to get to the cause and the cause is controlling insulin. And the cause is also building strength, building muscle, and that helps. That's the other side of the equation because you, you suck up carbohydrate better and you can control insulin better. Now, the, the other factors are huge, sunlight, air quality, sleep quality, all those things, but you generally get an improvement in everything if you can just do those CrossFit two factors. My point is the third factor, it's, it's like, okay, yeah, what is this system that needs to be implemented beyond CrossFit? Because at the moment, there's one real social, socially significant global alternative to the status quo, and that's CrossFit. And it's freaking awesome that that exists because if it doesn't exist, there is no global movement, no global alternative. Like the biggest thing is probably Tim Noakes with the Banting diet and that sort of thing with its 1.2 million you know, followers in the Facebook group that got shut down. Um, Facebook censorship is, is being ramped up in Google and that sort of thing. 
So the biggest things are probably, you know, the ketogenic diet movement. And now there's like a meat-based diet that's kind of pushing forward. Veganism, I guess, is the other massive social movement on the health front, but it's a fraud. And it's also massively in favor of the processed food industry because, yeah, you can eat vegetables, but no, there's no caloric, you know, they're insignificant in terms of their caloric intake. It's very, very difficult to get a significant portion of the calories from vegetables. So then it goes to fruits. We can get a lot more calories, but you're also pushing towards that diabetes. And then you go into all the processed crap and these meat alternatives and absolute crap that's on the shelves. Um, so the vegan is a distraction from the health movement. Uh, the low-carb movement and meat-based diets and those sorts of things are building in significance. But what club do you join? Like, where do you actually go? Like the online thing, yeah, like Joe Rogan, that's a social movement and that is huge. And it's so good that that exists. It's so good that someone is, is speaking truth I was just listening to him this morning speaking with, I don't know the guy's name, but um, speaking about the, the future of genetic manipulation. Like that, that's, that's such a big part of our future. And, and, you know, scary, exciting, whatever. It's putting those discussions into a useful public forum. Like public media is, an, is a joke and it's losing its significance. Like TV shows in America have less of an audience than, than Joe Rogan. And I'm sure... You know, probably 50% of Joe Rogan's audience would be overseas. CrossFit has 50% of its presence inside the United States, I believe, or at least North America. But what's, what, where can you go, right? Like this is, this is the thing. How do you create that next, that next phase? I believe that next phase, the next evolution beyond CrossFit is getting into the, into the mental side of it, getting more into the community side of it. And I think that is the, the third factor of CrossFit. It is the community. I don't think it happens, and, 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 and Glassman can make the case, well, look, someone can stay at home and they can, they can do the metabolic work and they can eat the diet and they don't get the disease, but it's still that they've become part of something. They're still following CrossFit.com and they're doing those workouts uh, from CrossFit.com, whether it's the living room-based one or you know the workout of the day, or they go to a box, right? So they've got the three kind of alternatives as far as I understand it, and then you've got the box that's, community-based and you've got the box or the, the people that are kind of athlete and performance-based. Ultimately, the community, I think, is, is the third factor. And, but beyond that, like, what, like mentally, what do we need? Like, what, what's, the, what's the system of thinking, the system of living, like the deeper philosophy? And I, I get that you kind of embody that by doing the thing. Like, that's why you have to, you just do the training and you, you get the power. You get, you get a change in mindset and a shift in, in who you are. My thought is that there is another evolution beyond this, that there is another phase that is clearly, more clearly about who you become as a person and what role you play in humanity. And collective, you know, people coming together and saying, yeah, like we, we want to consciously influence the future of humanity and we, we're going to live this way. And it's not going to be a homogenous thing, but, you know, the CrossFit already does that in the sense of the health and nutrition. And I think it can go bigger than that. And I think it needs to go bigger than that. And I, I think that, that that is the next thing because, as Glassman says, like a lot of people can go across the box and, you know, five out of 20, one out of four people is going to go, what, what the bleep is this? Like, what? I don't want to get smashed up in this way. I don't want to be racing the clock. Like, this, this, this is not good. And there's, you know, probably for every, you know, person that does that, there's probably 20 that do that just from looking at it on social media, etc. So what is a what is a real inclusive system? What is a, a you know a, a system of physical development and social development? Like I think that is what we need to be looking towards. How do we create that? That's that's the question. Uh, that's the question that I pose to myself. You know, probably, probably in 2007, like probably while I was sleeping on floors in Mexico and, you know, trying to get agricultural projects off the ground in indigenous villages and cultures where I feel like they did have a lot of cultural things that are powerful and they're right and that I would like to not see disappear. And they would, you know, like to not see disappear into the cash economy. But I was trying to figure out solutions there. And, and I guess the evolution of that has been real movement. It's been moving uh, outside of um, strength and conditioning, like I, I had the best job 
for me, the best job in the world in strength and conditioning was to work with the best sporting organization in Australia that was winning, which is the City Roosters. I had that best job and I moved away from that to do Real Movement Project. And the goal with Real Movement Project is to coach coaches and create global social change. And to an extent, you know, we've done something, but this, I guess this podcast is like, well, you know, how do, how do we do it? Like, how does real movement go to another level? But, you know, whatever you're thinking about, whatever you're building, you know, whether you're interested in being part of real movement or, you know, you've got some other idea, like, how do we do this? Like, what would it take? And, you know, what are the different moving parts of it? Like, that's the, that's the question that my life is about answering. And I'm interested to hear your thoughts about it. Like, what, what would it take to create another global movement? Some thoughts that I have, like, obviously, the training, the training is at the heart of it, like seeing massive physical transformation. I don't believe that something like Tony Robbins or, you know, Bob Proctor, and I love these kind of resources, Les Brown and these sorts of things. Earl Nightingale is, is one of the best ones. If you haven't checked out Earl Nightingale, he's passed away now. It's a while back. But some of his programs and audios and that sort of thing, like he was talking about the, the energy crisis and humanity and philosophy. Like I haven't heard anyone speak as importantly and powerfully as Earl Nightingale. Probably, you know, Joe Rogan is probably the, the next guy that I would put forward as someone who is considerately thinking about where humanity should go. So <laughs> interestingly, Earl Nightingale was probably the, the most popular radio um, sh- show. You know, his, his stuff was the most popular stuff in radio back when radio was podcasting. Um, And I guess it probably did fit within the system a bit more. Like Joe Rogan sits outside the system to a large extent. Like he can do what he wants to a larger extent probably than Earl Nightingale could have. But yeah, it's it's interesting. Like maybe they are the, the new guys, but I don't think that from that perspective, you can, you can really influence culture enough i think there has to be a physical component to it and people actually getting together in a place to really draw you know the power out of a social movement crossfit does that and it's you know it's fantastic that it has so what kind of facilities what kind of places what thing could could make that you know that next change and create a new wave in the world i think yeah like the training system is a key is a key thing and there's a lot of personal preference and I think there needs to be some fluidity about the system. Like there's definitely people who, who want to go and get shit done every day. And I'm a big fan of getting things done every day. I think that people who can't go to the gym every day should look at their, their values, their priorities, their, you know, how much, what they're doing, where they live, like look at it and, and analyze it and think like, should I be using this body every day? Like I do think we should be using the body every day and, Ancient Greece, they did have that philosophy of moving the body every day. Like this is not a new concept. It's not really a crazy concept. But I think some of it could be done at home, done in parks. You don't necessarily have to be going to your your gym, your, your facility, whether these are like real movement affiliates or whether it's, you know, doing things through Globo gyms and apps and home setups, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. But what, what does that actually look like? You know, I would say the primary difference is in terms of what, I really believe in and what I'm excited about in terms of training systems is doing a bit more strict gymnastics, doing um, a bit more uh, mobility work, you know, handstands, skill development for the brain. Like that's probably what I'm more excited about. Some basic body weight, fluid mobility type stuff. But then yeah, for sure going after weightlifting, um, powerlifting, there needs to be a big bodybuilding body composition component to it because one, that's what the market loves two that's that's a big part of longevity as we lose strength and as we lose muscle mass we approach death so it needs to have a significant component of hypertrophy and a significant component of of body body bodybuilding or body uh, composition society is under muscled because we just don't have to chop wood and carry water in the way that you know the community that i lived with in, in mexico had to do they would you know, strap weight around their head, strap wood to their back from a young age, kids, and carry it up and down hills. So there was no possibility of not having really strong legs, core development, etc. Like they, they were living that reality on a day-to-day basis. So I think, you know, not making it quite so much about um, how much you can push through pain, I think that that should be a component, just not probably quite as regularly in chasing the clock 
etc. A little bit more control, a little bit more um, expanding your comfort zone gradually is, is what I believe in. You, know, you definitely should push hard, but do people need to be layering more stress on? Do they have the capacity to deal with that? Um, I think there needs to be, you know, and I, obviously some boxers really do individualize that stuff well, but as a whole, as a system sort of thinking, that would be that would be a key difference. But yeah, seeing people get super strong, like it's cool seeing the, the trend of powerlifting and, and weightlifting emerging as as kind of sports. I guess it's just the negative I see with that is you get better and better at powerlifting, you get worse and worse at life. If you're not following something like a West Side Barbell method where you, you really are encouraged to, to be a good human as well as to be a good powerlifter, then, you know, there's a lot of powerlifters that can't really walk, can't really get up and down stairs, you have zero athleticism. It's not always the way, um, but, yeah, generally they've got to become very stiff, very unathletic. Um, it's, yeah, so, like, it's cool, but ones, like, I love singles. I love building to heavy one. But ones are not the answer in terms of, you know, creating something that really has a significant uh, global impact. I don't think that you're going to see massive extension in life, longevity through powerlifting to the same extent as a more mixed system where there's, you know, more learning and, and more of a metabolic component, skills, etc. And obviously this is all personal preference, but I'm talking about my kind of ideal system and designing something to make a shift in the world. Like if we're not designing something to make a shift in the world, if we're not putting forward alternatives for, for social change and, and social movements that start in the practical and the physical, then what are we doing? Like just had an election in Australia. This is, you know, the current path that we're on, the system of democracy, the system of health, the system of education. It leaves a lot to be desired. But how do we make a change in that? Well, I think that it starts with humans making a powerful decision about personal power, autonomy, and then you know, linking people together who've made those kinds of decisions. Like that was kind of what the last podcast is about is like people getting fired up on Rogan and Peterson and then they can go and do their things, but they're not really a place that is about embodying that philosophy. Uh, I think that that, that, is, that is, for me, that's the next level. That's the, what we should be focusing on, moving towards. So how would it happen? What does it look like? I think that an, the affiliate type concept is, is a proven and powerful one. Uh, there's things like, you know, F45, you know, all the big gym chains, Gold's Gym and all those kind of things. Like they're spread out and you could look at them in that way, but they're businesses, but they're, they're not social movements. I don't think you can really make a case that, that they're social movements with, you know, with, with a heart to them or with a ideology behind them or a, a philosophy or a, you know, something that they really like to do to change the world. I don't think that you can, you can see that within those things. I think they're businesses. I think everyone, you know, consumers can see that they're businesses and there's nothing wrong with that. People, some people like eating McDonald's, like that's, that's okay. Um, to an extent, you know, like it's individual choice and we have to put forward alternatives if we don't think that that is the best option. Like how do we get better food to people? How do we get better, you know, training to, to people? I think so many people have gym memberships and they don't go or they go and they don't get results. And it's because they're not being exposed to good systems and they don't, they don't have the support around them. There's no stickiness to the workouts. There's no, there's no gamification, no follow-up, no, no real system around it. And that's what CrossFit's done really well. Like they've created a powerful global system, 1,500 gyms, uh, 15,000 gyms, should I say, and, you know, 100,000 plus coaches and, you know, how many members? I don't know, but lots lots and lots of, of members around the world. Like I believe that if you can, even at the stage of having 100 great coaches, you start to make an impact on the world. And I think that... Um, CrossFit has had definitely uh, an impact on the world. That's really what I'd like to do. You know, and I think that the affiliate system is, is definitely one possibility within that for making an impact. I believe in going further with coach education. I know that you know, CrossFit likes to keep it light and just keep, you know, let people do their own thing and build their own you know, style of CrossFit and you know, develop themselves in, in their own way. And I guess the competitive side of CrossFit has really driven up standards uh, inside of their facilities and there's a, a lot of really great 
across the coaches and it's contributed a lot and impacted strength and conditioning world. I think strength and conditioning coaches who haven't di- you know, had a deep dive into CrossFit, they're, they're definitely missing the point. Like it's had a huge impact on the way I think about strength and conditioning and you know, even things that, that I did within the 2013-14 seasons with the, the Sydney Roosters and you know, consulting and looking at going back into international rugby league, etc. Like there's definitely an impact there from, from what CrossFit has, has done you know, and even just the simplest thing of like making weightlifting more accessible to the world. Like I didn't include snatches in programs until I got into them and CrossFit was a big part of making that kind of look normal. And then, you know, I've got different coaching and, and, and you know, got myself to a 100 kilo snatch, full snatch, which I thought was impossible because when I went to uni, they were like, you basically need a PhD specifically in weightlifting if you want to do any weightlifting. Otherwise, you know, you're doing a disservice to yourself, to the world, like it's, it's its own thing and don't touch it unless you're going to, you know, be, be a, you know, great at it. But that's like saying don't paint unless, you know, you're going to be Michelangelo and that's, you know, that's probably not the way, the way things should be. So what, what then are we going to do? Like if we've got this affiliate type concept, developing coaches, you know, I really do think that um, having coaches more connected to each other and contributing to each other's growth and experience. Like, that's what we've done with Real Movement. And it's it's been good. It's been exciting. We've lacked a lot of structure in the back end of kind of training progression and, and keeping those things, uh, accountability and, and kind of building, you know, keeping motivation, those sorts of things within pushing the standards of the coaches, I think has been a, a big, uh, on the actual training side, I think has been a big area that we need to improve on. And, and that's why the new system has online training you know, platform, you submit your videos, you move towards your targets, the metrics are all there, you know, inside the platform. So I do feel as though we're going to go to another level in physical standards. And that's not to say like there's definitely some uh, very strong coaches, multiple guys who've pulled over 300 kilo deadlifts. Um, you know, people have gone way beyond me in terms of, of strength and, and power and body composition and all those sorts of things. But on a whole, I think that we, we can definitely do that piece a lot better. And some of those coaches are, who've had those really high standards, you know, they've come with those really high standards. So uh, I want to see those standards of, of physical development, you know, raised to another level. I think that's an essential part of, of what needs to happen. But then on the other side, even without becoming amazing athletes, a lot of these coaches have opened businesses and they've, and they've stayed open. They've run communities and they've made an impact. And I believe that a big part of the reason why that's happened is because of what I'm talking about. Like there's, there's this bigger kind of social structure and cause behind what they do. Like they derive more meaning from what they do and therefore they deliver with more meaning and members come along and they hang around. You know, they, people feel that they're part of something of, of more significance without even being Real Movement Affiliates because we didn't offer that. I feel like if we were offering that Real Movement Affiliate thing and they could see that, yeah, well, there's, there are actually, you know, 100 plus of these, um, these are popping up all over the place we would have had a lot more impact. I, I, I probably held back from that with a desire to have more product control and quality control. And that's something that, you know, CrossFit and Greg Glassman have, have given up. They've just they've said, you know, you, you do your best and if you can stay open, good luck to you. So a poor quality facility will still have that brand, but it probably won't hang around, you know, for that long just by market forces and another gym will pop up and it will take those customers, etc. cetera. So um, maybe that's part of it. You know, maybe that's part of it. I think massive, huge quality control, like huge incentive and support for coaches to be great, uh, an affiliate system and building both sides of the equation, like being great on the human personal purpose side of things. So I think we've done well and encouraged all our coaches to, to go further, faster, you know, think, think bigger. That's something that's worked really well. As far as, you know, the actual standards in the movement and things like that, I think we could do better. And, and I'm, in saying that, like the results that people get within real movement gyms, I think, you know, uh, are very good and industry, you know, well above industry standard and you know, pushing things to another level. But could we do it a lot better, a lot faster? I, I believe so. And I think that, it's going to take a new structure to, to do that. Um, I guess another side of the equation that we really built into real movement, that that's a huge part of it, that 
the, on the client side would be massive to bring in as well would be that con- that element of continual learning and self development you know to even just on ramping with audio books and podcasts and those sorts of things making that second nature to be exposed to the best ideas of our time or even going back to the best ideas of of past times with things like uh, learning girls programs and those sorts of things like if people are tuning into that stuff they're going to make so much more money they're going to be better citizens like they're going to think of themselves in a whole new light i think that shift in personal identity personal image is such a big part of of what we do and then you know getting into reading getting into you know philosophizing getting into podcasting like there's a number of the real movement coaches now have have podcasts you know some of them mentor coaches and they mentor facilities and they're business coaches and and those sorts of things seeing that kind of growth within members i think is is part of this next wave as well is to see members going out and, and implementing projects of passion i think you know one of the great examples jonathan from mitch park's gym who started a project for homeless people and there were some great things came out of uh, Lee Stalker's gym, News of Strength, you know, with cl- clients getting involved in amazing projects and linking them back to the gym. Like imagine if you're kicking off a project, but you already have 50, 100 people who are backing you in that project, who support you on social media, who buy your first product, you know, do that sort of thing. Well, imagine if that 50 to 100 was actually, you know, 50 to 100,000. Imagine if that's a network of you know, 500 affiliates around the world and strength and conditioning gyms that decide, yeah, maybe we won't go this alone. Maybe we'll be connected to a bigger network, keep learning, have some more support, have some more brand power and see if we can actually make a difference in the world. Like it's great to make a difference in your suburb and and, um, that's definitely not insignificant to have, you know, 50, 100, 200, whatever members of your suburb, you know, getting the benefit of of what you're doing. But imagine if you could actually share that with, with, you know, people all over the world with, you know, at the moment it's, you know, 20,000, 15,000, whatever through existing real movement channels, but that's with no affiliates, you know, as we move into, you know, rec- working with gyms and working with the best coaches and giving you a voice and an opportunity to speak, not just on the real movement podcast and on the real movement Instagram and Facebook channels, but, you know, beyond, you know, beyond that being shared through all the facilities, the facility in Germany loves the message that you've said or the way that you train someone today and, and, and you repost that, they repost that thing and all of a sudden this gym in Sydney is, is, is having an impact in Germany. And that, like that, that is what I want to see. But I, I think that we can really foster that support and just, you know, growing everybody you know, within the community and everybody having that growth mindset and pushing ahead with their own training and their own member support. And I think that we can just create this massive, you know, masterminding conglomeration of of intelligence and knowledge and energy and accelerate this whole journey so much faster i know that you know there's a lot of different small strength and conditioning gyms going out of business and it's you know it's not good the the big box gyms have, have kind of pushed back and there's definitely a lot more competition coming for small private facilities these mom and dad facilities it has the opportunity has been anyone who can get you know 10 20 grand together can actually get started in a facility and it's not been that hard to stay open if you've got a half decent service but the game is definitely changing with that. There's some different things that are happening with, with Facebook and marketing. It's not as easy to get yourself out there anymore. And there's, you know, there's, the big brands are coming back and there's, you know, more, more and more facilities are getting squeezed and the, the best facilities will survive. The challenge is how do we create the best facilities, have another level of service, another level of significance and integrity and importance to what we do and, and you know, be those leaders, like be those premium facilities that that stick around and that grow and that, you know, duplicate, etc. You know, travel around the world, have your staff go and intern at different facilities and travel and go and spend some time at one of the gyms in France, one of the gyms in Ireland. Those massively enriching human experiences that are kind of going to come from this network where that sort of thing is encouraged and you know, go and spend time at one of the gyms in, in the Latin, Latin America, learn Spanish. You know, there's all sorts of amazing things that are going to come from this next phase. And I think it starts with getting those, getting those affiliates on board and just supporting individual brands to, to, ha- to play a bigger role and to have a bigger part uh, in this conversation about where the world is going in terms of health, but in terms of philosophy as well. Like it's a philosophy of living. It's this stoic philosophy and this idea of doing some hard stuff today to open up a new and better future for tomorrow. 
if we don't create this culture, then who, who creates it? Right? It, it is it is being created through you know, Rogan and Peterson. And there's, there's, there's some really positive stuff out there. But how do you go and how do you go and embody that? Like, where do you go and embody that? And yeah, you can do it on your own, but that is the third pillar of CrossFit. Like, community is the thing. Community is the thing. Like, it's not it's not enough. Like, I don't know I know some amazing gym owners, and some of them say, look, Michelin Michelin three star. You know, I don't know if he wants to be quoted on, so I won't say name. But Michelin three star, you don't you, you don't franchise that. Like that that doesn't get reproduced. If you want to be the best of the best, there's no there's no reproducing that. That's a, that's an approach. It's it's a valid approach, and that coach is having a huge impact, you know, on the world. But that's 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 not what I believe in. I believe in having the best quality product possible, but at the same time, you know, we 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 need to change. Like the the public health, mental and physical figures, not okay, not acceptable. So what's the action that comes from that? Like you could go into politics, you could start a, a welfare organization you can you can be you know you can be a protester or an anarchist or all these possibilities of what you do and what you create my solution is create places that people go to multiple times a week have a powerful philosophy inside of that facility empower those people physically and encourage them to, to think and make decisions and be educated about important things if that becomes the dominant paradigm of our time the future looks very different to the robotic controlled by social media, um, you know, digitized future that we're, we're staring down the barrel of. And, you know, this decrease in life expectancy that's happening, you know, a lot of the Western world has seen a significant drop in life expectancy over recent years. And it's because of suicides and because of overdoses on pain medications, you know, they're primarily primary drivers of this. And, you know, you see all that they're giving out speeding fines left, right, and center and blitzing on, on, on the roads and all that sort of thing. What's much more dangerous than getting out there in your car is the stuff that's being dished out, you know, by the medical system. And that's just one fraction of the damage that's being done by the medical system. It's those, that pain medication. The whole paradigm of health, the dominant paradigm of Western health is broken. You only have to look at the statistics. Like, and it's, it's not okay. We need to shift and, you know, CrossFit has done an amazing thing there. What else can be done? If you want to be a CrossFit gym, call me a CrossFit gym. And I've thought about, you know, maybe that's the path, but like, it's just not, it's not me. And as much as I love it and support it and, you know, have lots of friends that are into it, you know, that's not me. So for everyone that it's not, what do we do? For all these strength and conditioning facilities and people who would like to, to see, uh, to be part of something bigger and, and you know really make an impact on the world, well, what are we gonna do? And that's the that's the question. What are your opportunities at the moment? What are your what what's what are the options if you really want to be part of something global and significant? And there's different business options for sure. You know, there's people popping up with different franchises of things. But as far as social movements go, I'm not really aware of of any alternative. And that's you know. It's what I like to be. So, yeah, that's the that's the question that my life is about answering. It's not something that I'm going to answer here on this podcast. Probably not something that you're going to reply to this with the complete solution to either. But I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you you know if you're a member of a gym or you know a strength coach, like send them send them this. Like maybe they're actually thinking about this. Maybe they would like to make a difference in the world beyond their suburb. You know, uh, beyond their city, beyond their country, whatever you know, whatever level they're having an impact on right now. It's an interesting question at least and, and one that we should consider. And for sure, some people are going to go, no, like I want to be that Michelin three star. I'm just, you know, I want to be independent and I'm going to survive on my own and I'm happy with the impact that's possible through that. There's going to be other people who, who go, yeah, like this is, this road's going to be a lot rockier, a lot, you know, the, the possibility, the security for my family, for my future and to be able to, to really say that I did my best during this lifetime, like that's probably not going to happen on my own. Like I probably need to, to connect into something. And, you know, Charles Poliquin had a huge impact on strength and conditioning and he had a huge impact on holistic health and he pushed back on a lot of the dominant paradigms around health and around bodybuilding. I just feel it's a real shame that he, he wasn't able to, to really connect with, with local facilities. And there are probably... 
I don't know, two, three, five hundred maybe facilities that really identify themselves with polyquin education. There's probably 20 or 30 that people can can name, you know, and that's, in my mind, that's, that's, it's a shame because there was a lot there. There was a lot there that the world could have built on, but it's not necessarily an easy thing to do. I've been working on it since 2014 and there's definitely been, you know, some successes and 2015, 16, like we had massive momentum with real movement. I, it got complicated. I try to do it in different ways. I try to focus on key coaches and start a franchise and I've continued to experiment with how this is going to happen. I started a supplement company. That supplement company went crazy and supported, you know, my financial growth and, and whatever. And it, you know, it still does. It's still, still a significant contributor and it's based around this low carbohydrate solution. You know, um, some people agree with it. Some people don't agree with it, you know, on it and, Charles Poliquin both, you know, brought out their own exogenous ketones. So that's pretty good. In my mind, that's pretty good support that, you know, I was going down the right path and, and I do believe that it's a great product and great contributor to the world. But ketones, exogenous ketones are, are not going to make the change in the world that, you know, we, we, that I really dream about. So they're only ever going to be a piece of the puzzle and uh, the, bigger, the bigger piece, the bigger solution. Like that's, that's what I'm excited about. That's what I'm creating. If you'd like to be the first in your area, if you'd like to be, you know, a big contributor to this, it's worth having conversation. It's worth thinking about it. Uh, the, the financial commitment, etc., is not going to be a barrier. It's more about heart and soul. Uh, even coming to the level one events, getting involved in the level two, three program, finances will not stop you from, from being involved. The investments are small. And if you can't make the investments, speak to me about it and we'll come up with a solution. Like This is not... A financial thing it has to make money i have financial needs with my family but for the most part like i wear the same clothes that i've been wearing since whenever like I, it's my material ambitions don't go beyond being able to provide amazing facilities for this stuff and making sure my family's you know okay comfortable but that's not that's not a big financial challenge so the finances will not be a barrier in this this is this is a mindset thing this is a mentality i interested in working in a team can you contribute to a team? Yeah, that's that's kind of the, the question, the conversation. And yeah, there's that doesn't come without challenges. Like that definitely doesn't come without challenges. Building a team, building an organization, organization building a global movement. Uh, it's not the simplest thing. I've been working at it now for five years. And yeah, we, we've had over 70 facilities open. We've, we've run, you know, 20, 30, 40 events, different seven, six, seven different countries, something like that. We've done some stuff. We've got some experiences, but yeah, definitely a long way to go. So uh, appreciate you listening to this. I would love to hear your thoughts. And you might feel as though you're not in a position to be significant with this, but you've listened this far and uh, this has meant something to you. And, and maybe even, you know, you're thinking about solutions in a whole different mindset and mind frame and in a different direction. I'd love to hear about that as well. Like that's, that's what this podcast is created for, to inspire thinking and, and, and possible solutions. So give me some thoughts. Keegan Smith for Real Movement Project and for the world. Talk to you soon.